Welcome to What's Now. I'm your host, Christine Napier. We've got a great show coming your way. We are focusing on your health and your finances, two very important things in your life. And up first, we're gonna focus on mental illness, specifically adults who struggle with schizophrenia. I spoke with Dr. Gordon, who has some important information about obstacles that you can find when trying to get care. Here's more. Adults living with serious mental illness can face major hurdles in managing their health. In the case of schizophrenia, adults often experience recurrent relapse episodes, which can have a negative impact on the patient, their loved ones, and our healthcare system. Here to explain the issues and how to help is psychiatrist Dr. Maxie L. Gordon. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Gordon. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. What are some challenges that exist when it comes to treatment for adults living with schizophrenia? Well, you know, schizophrenia is a severe mental illness, and it involves people who may have hallucinations, meaning they hear things, uh, they hear people talking with them uh, when nobody's around. They may actually see things also. They may see figures that are scary. They may see faces. The other thing, of course, is that they're disorganized in terms of their speech and, and the way that they try and organize their life. As a result, uh, they have a lot of difficulty. In this country, around 2.8 million adults are living with schizophrenia. And so when you think about it, you may understand that your neighbors, your friends, or even maybe a distant relative may have some of these symptoms. There are a couple of things that I think are challenges. One of them, of course, is the access to care, making sure that these individuals have the proper setting in which to receive help. And usually that's a mental health center or something similar in which people are trained to recognize uh, mental illnesses. The other thing, of course, is uh, fighting stigma, the stigma that surrounds mental illness, especially here in the South. And of course, educating people on mental illness and, and the fact that there are available treatments that are now tailored to the individual. In your experience, what are some of the disparities that you see in schizophrenia and also in serious mental illness care? Of course, one of them is the fact that we don't have, uh, a lot of people can't get in to see providers. Uh, one reason is that there are not a lot of providers in the area. There's not a, a program in place to help these individuals. Uh, therefore, there's not a lot of education about mental illness. Uh, another thing is that there may not be enough culturally sensitive or culturally competent providers. Uh, people may be comfortable with people who understand their culture and look like them. So finding providers who can understand the people that they're working with is also an important point. Finally, there are some financial or environmental hardships that make it difficult for people to, to get mental health providers. What is the importance of the new American Psychiatric Association Clinical Practice Guideline for healthcare professionals treating adults living with schizophrenia? And, and we're excited about that because the American Psychiatric Association has not put out new guidelines in a while. But recently what they did is they, there's a group of medications called long-acting injectable medications. And the APA, the American Psychiatric Association, has recommended that we expand the use of these medications in adult patients living with schizophrenia. And this is what we find, that these medications have been underutilized, but if we know that these medications can actually delay relapse, meaning people stay well longer taking these medications. Now, one of the things that I've tried to do is partner with Janssen to kind of bring awareness to schizophrenia and the treatments that are available. And how can we improve access to and quality of care for adults with schizophrenia, especially in diverse communities? Yeah, I think one of the things we mentioned, of course, is trying to get diverse providers. And if we can not improve the diversity of our providers, one of the things is we can improve the cultural sensitivity of those providers, making sure that they understand the population that they're working with and understand some of their nuances and the mores of that community. The other thing, of course, is educating people because education is a strong weapon against stigma. Understanding that these are brain diseases, they don't come from character flaws. It's not because you woke up on the wrong side of the bed. 
And in your opinion, what are important considerations for doctors to discuss with adult patients regarding their treatment options? I think it's important for doctors to discuss the fact that there are treatments available and that uh, schizophrenia can be a very debilitating disease if not properly treated. One of the sites that I recommend is psychiatry.org. That's psychiatry.org. And not only will you find resources on schizophrenia and other severe mental illnesses, you'll also find these treatment guidelines that we talked about from the APA. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Gordon, for speaking with us today about this important topic, helping to reduce stigma and increase good mental health care in diverse communities and so much more. We really appreciate your time. Thank you.